Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's transcribed episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled The Jewel Mystery of Channel Island. Channel Island lies about 12 miles off the coast, near the sea lanes of transatlantic shipping. Swept by cool ocean breezes, but difficult of access due to its rocky shores, it is a favorite resort of the wealthy, whose yachts dot the surface of the island's almost completely landlocked harbor. As our story opens today in the office of Police Commissioner Donnelly, Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, and Mike Manigan are being assigned to special duty by the Commissioner. Uh, there have been a number of mysterious jewel robberies at the Bonaire Hotel on Channel Island, and we've been called in to work on the case. I've selected you two men because I have confidence in you. You work well together. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, to whom shall we report out there? To a Mr. Halstead, the new manager of the Bonaire. This Mr. Halstead, the new manager, uh, do you know anything about him, Commissioner? Well, according to the owner of the hotel, who incidentally is a friend of mine, he came to him highly recommended by a hotel owner at Virginia Beach. Mm, the uh, Bonaire's rather exclusive hotel, isn't it? Yes, it caters to the wealthier class. Is this the first year jewel robberies have occurred there? I believe so. Well, that's a... Significant, if you ask me. Uh, perhaps. But run down every clue. We'll do our best, sir. Yes, I know you will. I feel I'm sending the two best men I have. Thank you, sir. Now, any further questions? Uh, yes, sir. Has uh, any of the loot been recovered? Well, not so far. An attempt has been made to keep the matter as quiet as possible. But the news has leaked out, and people are already beginning to leave the hotel for other vacation centers. Well, then we'd better work fast. That's right. Now, any more questions? No, sir. And you better get going. There are only two boats a day. You take the evening boat at 7 o'clock. You'll have to hurry. And remember, I'm depending on you two. Yes, sir. And thank you, sir. Uh, what are you taking with you, Danny, besides your Blue Beetle chain armor and mask and the change of clothes? That portable radio locator and several of those tiny radioactive crystals you discovered. Uh, Will that radio locator fit under your arm? Yes, I've tested it already. Well, good luck, Danny. I hope you're successful in apprehending the jewel thief. Thanks, Doc. That must be Manigan calling for me. I said I'd meet him here. Well, hello, Doc France. Is Sherlock Holmes de Garrett here? <laughs> yes, he's back here, Manigan. Hello, Detective Manigan. Where's your overnight bag? Well, my suitcase is out in the car. Well, if you're ready, Mike, we'll start. Well, uh, what's in your bag, Danny? Oh, a few simple necessities. Toothbrush, shaving kit, bathing suit, water wings, rubber boots, pajamas, and uh, winter overcoat. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no umbrella. I uh, only carry that in the tropics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, Mike, let's go. My nostrils crave the smell of salt sea air. Say, Commissioner Donnelly sent you Mr. Uh, uh, Garrett. Patrolman Dan Garrett, Mr. Halstead. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Garrett. My partner, Officer Manigan, is having a look around. I expect him any minute. I see. Well, I don't know whether you'll be able to discover any more than Groggins has or not. Groggins is our house detective. He was with me at Virginia Beach. Oh. I'll have you meet him. Miss Tingley, ask Mr. Groggins to step in, please. What's that? Oh, very well. Send him right in. Your partner, Officer Manigan, is here. That's fine. You sent for me? Oh, yes, Goggins. Come in. This is uh, Officer Garrett from the York City Police Force on special assignment to help us catch the jewel thieves. Oh, city detective, huh? <laughs> well, not exactly. 
I'm only a patrolman on special assignment by orders of the commissioner. Oh, sort of a rookie detective. Well, I never heard it put just that way, but perhaps you're right. Come in. Uh, Mr. Halstead? Oh, yes, come in. Oh, oh, hello, Danny. Hello, Mike. This is Mr. Halstead, and this is Mr. Groggins, my partner, Officer Manigan. Oh, hello, Manigan. Another rookie detective? Uh, won't you sit down, Officer Manigan? No, thanks. Hey, what's that crack about rookie detective? Uh, Mr. Groggins has just coined a new title, Mike. Rookie detective. Oh, <laughs> I see. Well, then maybe he's already caught the jewel thieves, and we're just wasting our time. Uh, Groggins. Yes, sir? I think you'd better get on the job. The guests will be dancing in the ballroom, and you'll have to keep a sharp lookout on the upper floors. Come in. Well? Uh, pardon me, sir, but Mrs. Thomas would like to have her jewel case from the safe. Oh, just a minute. She must be getting dolled up for the dance. <laughs> She'll come down looking like an old-fashioned glass chandelier. <laughs> Here you are, boy. And be sure to get a receipt. Uh, yes, sir. Just a moment. Uh, may I see those jewels? Mm, certainly. Here, I'll open the case for you. Whew. Boy, there's a fortune in diamonds and pearls there. Yes. Mrs. Thomas is very wealthy. Well, this necklace I'm holding must be worth a king's ransom. Hmm. It's no wonder jewel thieves like this hotel with people wearing stuff like that. That mannequin is not stuff. It's high-class goods. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Halstead. Put these back before they stick to my fingers. Here you are, boy. Take them up to Mrs. Thomas. Yes, sir. Now, you'd better go along, Goggin, just to make sure the jewels reach their proper destination. Okay, I'll take care of them. Well, I'll see you fellas around. Sure thing. We'll be around till the jewel thieves are caught. Uh, by the way, Mr. Halstead, uh, what's outside those windows? A water. The sea comes right up to the cliff. It's a sheer drop to the water below. Deep enough for a boat to navigate? Why, yes. What are you driving at? Nothing. Uh, I'm just wondering how the stolen goods could have reached the mainland. I understand everybody using a regular ferry was searched before going aboard after the previous robberies. Mm, that's right. I wasn't aware, though, that any of the stolen jewelry had been found. I see. Well, good night, Mr. Halstead. If Manigan and I see any suspicious characters about, we'll let you know. Do that. I will be extremely grateful. After all, these robberies reflect on me. Yes, they do, Mr. Halstead. Good night. <laughs> Another robbery. That's the third this week. I'm leaving this hotel first thing in the morning. This is the last straw. I'm cured of this place. Help! I've been robbed. Where's Mr. Halstead? I've been robbed. Hey, well, what's the trouble, lady? My jewels have been stolen. Every jewel I own. Well, now, here's Mr. Halstead. Oh, Mrs. We'll... Thomas, goodness, come here. into my office, please. Oh. This is terrible, but we'll find them. We'll catch the thieves. Right in here, please. Oh, thank you. Saunders. Yes, sir? Tell musicians to continue the dance music just as if nothing had happened. Yes, sir. Oh. Now, Mrs. Thomas, just sit down here and tell us all about it. Officer Manigan here is from the York City Police. He's here to help us, too. That's right. Now, where's Officer Garrett? Well, uh, he said he was gone for a walk. Find time to take a walk. Oh, Danny ain't wasting his time. You can be sure of that. Hey, what's wrong, Mr. Halstead? Another robbery. Mrs. Thomas here. Well, I'll be. Now, now, just calm yourself, Mrs. Thomas, and tell us all about it. All right. After I left the ballroom about 15 minutes ago... I retired to my room. I removed my pearl necklace and put it with my other jewels. I undressed and went into the bathroom to take my shower before retiring. When I came back into the room, my jewel case was gone. This looks to me like an inside job. <laughs> the blue beetle. Blue beetle. Yes, the blue beetle. Did someone lose this jewel case? I hey, it's that crook you read about in the papers. He's the jewel thief. Oh, but... Your case is empty. Blue Beetle, I'm going to arrest you on suspicion of robbery. Can you prove it? No, but I'll take a chance, just on general principles. Put up your hands, Blue Beetle. Put up your gun, Broggins. Bullets can't penetrate that blue chain armor. Besides, you might hit Mrs. Thomas there. Oh, oh dear. dear. I'll just slap these handcuffs on him, and Danny and I'll take him back to the mainland in the morning. But my jewels... Where are my jewels? Your jewels are in this room, madam. In this room? What? So you have got them, Blue Beetle. No, but one of you four people has them on his person. That's a lie. Why, you cheap masquerading crook, I'll... The fire bomb! See where it is, Goggins, and call the fire department. I'll join you in a minute. Okay, Chief. 
But don't let the Blue Beetle get away. He's the jewel thief. Well, gentlemen, the Blue Beetle has found out what he wanted to know. I'm leaving you now. Watch out, Minigan. Guard the door. Sorry, gentlemen, but I'm not going that way. Oh, look! Stop him! Why, he's going to go... Well, I'll be. He jumped out of the window. It's a hundred foot drop to the water below. That's the end of the Blue Beetle. But I still haven't got my jewels. What will happen to the Blue Beetle? Who has the stolen jewels? How did the Blue Beetle know the jewels were in Halstead's office? These questions will be answered in the next transcribed episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.